Hey everybody, I am John Barker and welcome to episode 1 of Here to Record's Show and Tell, the series all about the gear for live event videography, for live streaming and for recording. And today in this episode, we're going to take a look at the HyperDAC Shuttle 2 from Blackmagic Design. Now this is the box, um, it comes with some uh, extra power adapters, you can probably hear them, but we're not going to look at this today, we're going to look at the device itself. Here it is on the table, it's quite small, it's quite sturdy, it's well built, but let's take a closer look. So here it is in the overhead camera, you can see on the front you have the Blackmagic logo, blah blah blah, and here's where the SSDs fit in. I have a currently a, a SanDisk Xtreme Pro 960GB drive and it slots in the side just like that with a slightly satisfying uh, little click. And then let's take a look at the in and out ports. Uh, here we have power, we have HDMI in, we have HDMI out, we also have SDI in the form of these little DIN connectors in and out and then we have a USB port for updating the software and for making a few changes to the settings and let's keep looking around, nothing there, nothing there and here are the buttons. So let's take a look all the way along, we have starting at the side we have a uh, indication for the battery, the built-in battery. Then we have some LED lights for SSD, for video feed. We have on off. I'll just switch it on right now. There you go. It's running on the battery power right now. And as you can see, the SSD light is on. If I just take out the SSD once again and pop it back in, you'll see. Yep, there we go. SSD light comes on just to tell you that there's a compatible drive in the in the slot. We have a display button. It does nothing. We have uh, the normal uh, stop and play and forward and back and finally the record button. The next thing I'm going to do is plug in the HDMI feed from the camera you're watching on right now into the back of the device. So here we go. HDMI in. There we go. And um, now I can press record and there we go. We are now recording the main camera output from um, my XA10 which is shooting this video and there we go it's recording 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 I can press stop now to turn that off and that will have stopped it and it's written to the SSD so I record to ProRes on these SSDs and like I said I have a 960 gigabyte SanDisk Xtreme Pro drive and that gives me roughly about one gig a minute mm, give or take so that's more than enough to record a full day at a conference and then that night I can dump this off to another hard drive or buy a couple of these. They're not cheap. In fact, often they're more expensive than the HyperDAC itself, but um, it's 960 gigabytes. That's loads to get you through one whole day, and uh, then you can dump it off to something else. So I'm just plugging this drive back in again, and then popping out the HDMI cable, and instead plugging in a USB cable so that you can see what the interface looks like on the computer. So let's bring forward the laptop and let's plug in the USB cable and uh, let's see what the software looks like. So all you have to do is go over to Blackmagic Design, support section and download the HyperDAC uh, setup software. So in here I can see that my Shuttle 2 has been recognized. I've switched it on so that means that it's picked up by the computer and I can go into settings and it connects to the device and then I can choose which codec I want. So you have uncompressed 10 bit, you have ProRes like I use, or DNX HD. Uh, like I say, ProRes is fine for me. I don't use any triggers over SDI or timecode run, but you can do that. And then you can put timecode out as well. I don't use that. And that's pretty much it. That's all the settings you get for the HyperDeck Shuttle 2. I can just save those settings and come back out again. And that's pretty much it for the setup uh, software on the computer. Now let's talk about the SDI cables that you will need for the uh, HyperDeck Shuttle. So let's take a close up look at the cables. You have DIN on both sides over here, and then we have a male and a female BNC on the other side. So you just pop the DIN into the back of the HyperDeck. This clicks in there, and now you know you can send in and out uh, your program feed, maybe your out again to another HyperDeck for a secondary backup, whatever you want to do. These cables are not the cheapest. These were about 50 pounds, I think, for the HyperDeck SDI pack, something like that. Um, so you can get them other places if you prefer, uh, but th that was like sort of the official pack of cables that I've that I purchased. And yeah, they're not that cheap. It's kind of annoying that it doesn't have standard BNC, but I understand based on the size of the HyperDeck. 
So let's talk about a few pros and a few cons of the HyperDeck Shuttle. Now, the first pro is definitely that it's a rock solid recording. I haven't had any issues with the recording of the HyperDeck Shuttle. It's worked for me every time to the hard drive, worked really well. Um, it's really nicely built, really easy to throw into a bag or throw into uh, your fly case. You can trust that this thing is going to last pretty well. A few cons about the device is that the uh, display, DSP button, it doesn't do anything. You can press it, you can connect in SDI out, HDMI out, and it doesn't show anything. What would I want it to show? I'm not sure. Maybe uh, how long I've got left on the hard drive, a rough indication of things like that. If I just press the button and it showed up on a HDMI monitor, that might be cool. Um, so it's kind of a shame not to have that in there. Um, one of the other things, obviously, is the uh, the DIN connections, you have to have a whole other set of cables that you have to carry around. I've got plenty of SDI cables and now I've got to carry around these other cables. Again, not the worst thing ever, but it is a little bit of a shame just to have to keep adding on extra little tiny bits of pieces and little connectors. And finally, the other downside is the hard drives. Like I said, you want to use a reliable hard drive. I've put a link below this video to all the um, recommended SSDs. Um, this is definitely one of them. It's fast enough to keep up with the writing speeds, but it is not cheap. I could have went for cheaper options, obviously, but um, I wanted to be pretty reliable about my recording. Uh, so that's a shame. This is sometimes more expensive than this. It doesn't really equal up, but that's okay. It's worked really well for me, recorded really well for me, so I can't really complain too much about it. I would say there's definitely more pros on this HyperDeck shuttle than there are cons, and I think based on the build quality of it, and how well it works, that's definitely something that I can, uh, I can stand behind and recommend that it works really well for me. And that just leaves the pricing. So it cost me, I think it was £275 or somewhere in around there to buy this. Then the hard drive itself was in around £300. I'll let you figure out your local price on that and you can probably find a good deal as well. Um, so it's device itself, Yes, very affordable, very good. Hard drives, shop around, you'll probably find something. And uh, I would stick with the recommended list so you know every time that it'll, it'll work pretty well for you. Um, but yeah, in the round, the £300 mark is a pretty good deal for uh, really good quality recordings. So I'm pretty happy with it. And that's it for episode one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I think that was it.